the emotion I'm working with is called disgust. It's a big word. Remember last time, that's all right. He can keep, uh, I don't want to interrupt children because they are so pure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's our attitude to block them, you know, so let them blossom, you know, we'll keep chatting. So last time the emotion I worked with was longing. I told you, right? Did we really address that? So the reason I'm bringing up disgust is yesterday what happened was my dad visited us. Uh, my husband. My husband has this need to be in control when he's at home. He'll take suddenly charge. The minute he walks in, it's like an elephant entering the room and stomp its feet. And I said, that's it. He's the boss. And then he would be going on vacation and stuff. But that doesn't matter. The minute he comes in, he takes over. Again. Like, you know, the re reintegration stress is what is the most stress I feel. Because to understand where he's at. Because see, world starts moving differently when they are out. But when he comes in, he'll plug himself in. And I need to understand where he's working from. And if I don't, it is my problem. It behooves me. That's what he'll say. As an adult, I'm not able to be healthy enough to handle it. Right? So I'm always going to be the one that needs to catch up with him. Right? It doesn't matter how far I I have to run. So yesterday, right, my, my dad uh, wanted to visit with me in Rhode Island. And my husband says, the weather is going to be good. Do you want to go? If my husband owns a boat, he want to go for a boat ride. So I wanted to really see whether he wanted me around because the thing is, he always treats me as a bag of bad smells, okay, default. I'm, so I'm like saying, knowing this is what he knows about me, because that's the way I see it. And also he says, it's more stressful to have you around, but I would rather give you my time. So essentially, always, it is like how graceful it is to hang out in his company. And I'm not being grateful for what all he's manifesting. So I told my dad, dad, I said, if you're going to come, I'm going to be in Cape. That's one of my goal as a spiritual mother is not to use my ego, but to really, this year I have decided to give 100% to study my husband, you know. And because I tried very, very, very hard, and I'm again and again coming up short. Like, you know, with, with my eldest one, I finally said, go love yourself, you know, seriously. <laughs> and I actually took out my wedding bag. I don't know. I don't think my husband knows. And I put it on my right side because I find it very exhausting emotionally. And I feel I cannot seriously do this way anymore. But he's one of my partner I have to work with spiritually. I get it. But like I feel even if you become nothing and dust, it's still not enough. Right? Like it's like almost like I have to still work hard. So... Yesterday, right? Like my dad said, okay, he'll come. But apparently his wife's pastor died and he has to attend the week and he's going to take the overnight bus. So he'll catch up at the trip so he wouldn't miss the trip. So he comes late. And Keith was very nice, my husband. He went and picked him up five in the morning for the bus station. It kind of saved me the ability to go and drive and pick him up. So we go to the... Um, uh, to, uh, to the Cape, but before that, the trip was supposed to be starting at 10. Okay, my dad is hungry when he walks in, so I am in the middle of cooking and making breakfast. You remember and, that same mama? and so, oh, my I husband, my husband, husband came in. I was just finishing up cooking, and he says, So apparently, you're not ready. So, uh, and he went for his AA meeting, and he's finishing it. And he walks in at like 9.50. 10 o'clock, I should have been ready. And uh, my saute and all is going on. It'll take me five more minutes. And then we have to eat and we 
So how much more minute you need? 20 minutes, keep. So immediately he says, I need one of the front stove. Can you get off? And I said, I'm in the middle of finishing. He says, my son feeding him is important. The elder one who has attitude, he has to feed him first. So because he walks in, he controls the kitchen. So he says, you need to get off the burner. Can you give me one burner? And my two dishes are going. And I'm like, not Can even done with feeding my dad. Yeah. And like, you know, so I'm like saying, so it Santa? means that 20 minutes include him cooking, right? Yeah. I said, did you change your mind? He says, no, no, no. You were not ready by 10. So I added one more task food to me. So it's your responsibility to give me the stove. And I, now I'm on a deadline and I have to somehow make that food. Your son won't eat what he what you cook? No, the problem is my son was not even part of the breakfast seal. He would easily, if I pay him $5, go to McDonald's and eat. Why can't he make some himself? No, no, but like I'm saying, he can like on the way to class, stop at McDonald's and get a burger. But my husband makes it a big deal to be in charge. See, the thing is, the minute he walks in, right, he's the boss. So, so then, like, you know, uh, I decided I can either use my ego. Hey, you guys can come and listen or I'm just, I'm just uh, recapping what happened. Or, like, you know, so, so I'm, like, telling him. So I had to, like, you know, swallow my pride, like, you know, like, not really get offended. And then in the car, he gives me rules. I cannot finish my conversation. And I said, Keith, let me off. I'll just walk back home. I said, you guys take home. You know, I'm not interested. So he says, in that case, I'll give you one more minute. I have to take it to that level for him to accept me to finish talking. So I finished talking. My dad has calcium brain. Very, very rigid. So he wouldn't listen to what I'm saying. So I need to correct him because thinking for a change is very important. I feel I don't want him to walk with the illusion that it's okay. So I find that equally challenging as well. So I, like I have to play a lot of dynamics. So then, uh, like, you know, we finished the trip. The trip was very nice. We had the best day ever. But, like, you know, it takes a lot of energy for me to come again and again, being chopped down, being humble, humble, humble. Today morning, right? So the first thing he says, my dad needed a ride. And so Keith is dropping him off. And so he looks at me with pure disgust on his face. And he says, did you take your chlorella? So I know he thinks of me as a bad smell. That's the first thing I could think of. But I didn't even have time to wash my face. Like, you know, I woke up, run so that I'll say goodbye to my dad. And he wanted a sandwich to be made for his trip. So I did peanut butter jelly. So I haven't even washed. I probably must smell like, like, you know, my drool. And I have no idea what I was smelling. I didn't even have time to go to the bathroom. Like, you know, like, seriously, I was even planning to go back to bed after the leave. But when I look at the disgust, it hurts me. You know, even though my husband, the minute I cry, he'll say, oh, it's so nice, you're healing, he'll say. So like, I know, and my teacher says, it's so, uh, uh, if you're crying, it means it's your ego. So like, you know, I'm like, both the angles, I cannot deal with it anymore, you know. So, but then he says all the nice words. He says, honey, I love you. But like, you know, I feel... The pain of the disgust is something very tough to swallow. So he says, did you take your floral light? I said, no, I didn't have time. I was even planning to go back to bed. He says, oh, yeah, that's right. But then, like, you know, he puts his head down because he doesn't want to really, like, look at me. And I have no idea how to even interpret this. So, but I said, okay, I need to first accept the space of being disgustful. It's okay. And, you know, so then, like, you know, finally, like, you know, yesterday's trauma, today's trauma. So, like, my dad takes off. And uh, I went, I was coming to work. They had road blocks and I have a detour. And it puts me in a detour that takes me another, like, 15 minutes to get through Hopkinton. I cry. 
you know, the detour symbolized so much wasting time. I have no idea where I'm going. And it did put me right where I need to be. But the unknowingness, the like, you know, trust I had to place in the universe. And I cried. And Taylor Swift uh, song comes on. Like it's a blank space. I write your name, baby. Have you heard that one? So she says, it's like a new love. I have no idea who you are. You would have played me this weekend job. And like, you know, you're going to again be somebody I need to deal with. But and so the emotion of disgust and blank space and again rewriting my name in my husband's memory. And he's inviting me for a Cape vacation with his mother and his sister and my boys. And he says, don't mistake, you're always needed in our family. And I'm going to make it a carnival. So you show up Wednesday and Thursday. And I made a conscious choice, like calling in, calling in sick. I'm not going to be there. I feel physically I'm going to withdraw from my family. I find the look of disgust is enough. That is enough present for me for today. That's the way I feel today. And I seriously don't want to do Christmas anymore. And I don't know how to do it in a way that will look nice. But I have decided it's like, you know, I can be seen, not heard. And I can be looked at in picture, not be present. That's a space I'm putting to. But that's what I'm working with. And I'm sure, like, you know, tomorrow it's going to be different. But I wanted to put it on record so that the last one was longing. Now I'm working with this ghost. And I don't know what the healing uh, emotion is going to be. But I feel inside I'm enough. I'm enough because I don't think I need to prove to anybody whether I wash my body or not whether I brush my teeth or not. But, you know, I feel I can live with myself. I feel I'm good. And I have, like, you know, the clo clothes and thing I need to take it off. But I think being human is the toughest I have done. So I know as a mother, you kind of can't like, Interesting things, right? When we talk in a way that's very healing, it's like, you know, like how we calm down, right? So, like, that's one thing, like, you know, consciously saying things. So it's like very healing, like, you know, because that's what I need to do this week. Pay, pay attention, like, reaction. you know, like, see how it's, like, you know, I'm not, right. uh, I'm not bringing his, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wrote to myself. I said, hey, go love yourself, play the blessings. <laughs> yeah. I'm like saying, you know what? I am cool. <laughs> I'm enough. Yeah. And I, don't, I told my teacher, I'm taking a break from you. And I told mentally my husband, that's it. Like, you know, I'm done. And I feel like, you know, whatever they want to do with their life, I'm happy. But I really need to heal and cry, take off my ego and do whatever. But I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty that needs fun. I'm going to do whatever I need to do mm -hmm. to bounce back. But I'm super happy, you know, like I might go for a movie by myself, yeah. do whatever. Right. Tomorrow is going to be my personal day. But this is where I'm at today. But I felt very happy though. Like, you know, when I came home, it was exhausting last night. I worked actually almost like I felt like I was going to pass out. But I said, I'm going to push through, finish what I need to do because I had to, we went for a, my dad came for a Father's Day. So we went to a Thai restaurant, very nice. They fried basil leaf mm. and they served. Oh my God, it was so delicious. Mm. Do you know there is a Cambodian market mm. here? Mm -hmm. They sell a flower called hummingbird flower. Take a look at it. And it is actually deworming. It would be very good for him, you know. So what you do is you saute in coconut oil and then you add coconut flowers, like dry mm -hmm. coconut flowers. They mm -hmm. sell it in market basket. Mm -hmm. They might sell it there too. And then a little salt with that hummingbird flowers, they call it. Very, very healing for his oh. tummy and it will help him to calm down. Oh. That's what I cooked yesterday oh. for my dad. I actually brought it for my lunch. Okay. If you want to see, maybe you can... Oh, he probably, he's no, no, for you. Oh. 
You want to you want to taste it? No, it's thank a little you. bitter. Smell it. Oh, that's interesting. It's almost like a. That's what I cooked this yeah. day for my dad. It's a delicacy in yeah. India. Huh. I bought it. They they sell it like for a dollar. That's all. Wow. But it, after twenty five years, I'm eating this. So it's called. This is called uh, Sebastia grandiflora. Huh. That's the herb name, and it's very healing. Go look up it. I will. Yeah. It's called Sebastia grandiflora. Very tough to grow in this country. It is in India. It it either has a white flower or red flower. And it will have a beak. So it will almost look like a hummingbird. Hmm. So they call it hummingbird uh, tree or hummingbird flowers. And I love the leaf. It's yeah. very bitter. But they'll cook it only on new, new moon day. Hmm. And it's to please the ancestors. Hmm. Like it almost looks like the DNA in our past. Hmm. The unresolved PTSD hmm. issue. So it kind of like feels like perfect for the disgusting watching to mm. heal because I need to digest that disgust. Mm. So I'm in a very good space. Thanks for listening, yeah. but this is what I wanted to break them.